The Tiger by William Blake. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal head or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distance, deeps or skies, burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp dare its deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright, in the forests of the night, what immortal head or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? Richard Corey by Edwin Arlington Robinson. Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, we people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, clean favored and impurely slim. And he was always quietly arrayed. And he was always human when he talked. But still, he fluttered pulses when he said, Good morning. And he glittered when he walked. And he was rich. Yes, richer than a king. And admirably schooled in every, gra every grace. And fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. So on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat, and cursed the bread. And Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. The Poison Tree by William Blake. I was angry with my friend. I told my wrath, my wrath did end. I was angry with my foe. I told it not, my wrath did grow. And I watered it in fears, night and morning, with my tears, and I sunned it with smiles, and soft, deceitful wiles. And it grew both day and night, till it bore an apple bright, and my fellow beheld it shine, and he knew that it was mine. And into my garden stole, when the night had veiled the pole, and morning glad I see, my foe outstretched. I Heard a Fly Bus by Emily Dickinson. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm. The eyes around had wrung them dry, and breaths were gathering firm for that last onset when the king be witnessed in the room. I willed my keepsakes, signed away what portion of me be assignable, and then it was there interposed a fly with blue, uncertain, stumbling buzz between the light and me. And then the windows failed, and then I could not see to see. More Lies by Karen Gottschall. Sometimes I say I'm going to meet my sister at the cafe, even though I have no sister, just because it's such a beautiful thing to say. I've always thought so, ever since I read a novel in which two sisters were constantly meeting in cafes. Today, for example, I walked alone on the wet sidewalk, wearing my rain boots, expecting someone might ask where I was headed. I bought a steno pad and a watch battery. The store windows fogged up. Rain in April is a kind of promise, and it costs nothing. I carried a bag of books to the cafe and ordered tea. I like a place that's lit by lamps. I like a place where you can hear people talk about small things, like the difference between azure and cerulean, and the price of tulips. It's going down. I watched someone who could be my sister walk in, shaking the rain from her hair. I thought, even now, florists are filling their coolers with tulips, five dollars a bundle. All over the city, there are sisters. Any one of them could be mine. Echo by Christina Rossetti. Come to me in the silence of the night. Come in the speaking silence of a dream. 
come with soft, rounded cheeks and eyes as bright as sunlight on a stream. Come back in tears, O oh memory, hope, love of finished years. O oh dream, how sweet, too sweet, too bittersweet, whose wakening should have been in paradise, where souls brimful of love abide in me, where thirsting, longing eyes watch the slow door that opening, letting in, lets out no more. Yet come to me in dreams, that I may live my very life again, though cold in death. Come back to me in dreams, that I may give pulse for pulse, breath for breath. Speak low, lean low, as long ago, my love, how long ago. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Whose woods these are? I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds, the sweet. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. The Darker Sooner by Catherine Lee. Then came the darker sooner, came the later lower. We were no longer a sweeter here, happily ever after, we were after, ever. We were farther and further. More was the word we used for harder. Loft was our standard bearer. Our gods were falling faster and falling larger. The day was duller. Duller was disaster. Our charge was ear. Instead of leader, we had louder. Instead of lover, never. And over this river broke the winter's black weather. Echo by Daryl Hyde. Echo that loved hid within a wood, would to herself rehearse her weary woe. Oh, she cried, and all the rest unsaid, identical came back in sorry Echo. Echo, for the fix that she was in, invisible, distraught by mocking passion, passionate, ignored, as good as dumb, employed that oh unchanged in repetition. Shun love if you suspect that he shuns you. Use with him no reproaches whatsoever. Ever you knew, supposing him to know. No melody from which you might recover. Cover your ears, dear Echo. Do not hear. Here is no supplication but your own. Only your sighs return upon the air. Ere their music from the mouth be gone. America by Claude McKay. Although she feeds me bread of bitterness and sinks into my throat her tiger's tooth, stealing my breath of life, I will confess I love this quadrant hell that tests my youth. Her vigor flows like tides into my blood, giving me strength erect against her hate. Her bigness sweeps me like a flood, yet as a rebel fronts a king and state, I stand within her walls with not a shred of terror, malice, not a word of jeer. Darkly I gaze into the days ahead and see her might and granite wonders there. Beneath the touch of time's unhearing hand, like priceless treasures sinking in the sand. Here by Joshua Mehigan. Nothing has changed. They have a welcome sign, a hill with cows and a white house on top. A mall and grocery store where people shop. A diner where some people go to dine. It is the same no matter where you go. And downtown, you will find no big surprises. Each fall, the dew point falls until it rises. White snow, green buds, green lawn, red leaves, white snow. This is all right. This is their hope. And yet, though what you see is never what you get, it does feel somehow changed from what it was. Is it the people, houses, fields, 
the weather? Is it the streets? Is it these things together? Nothing here ever changes till it does. Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. The moon lies fair upon the straits. On the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand, glimmering and vast, out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air. Only through a long line of spray, where the sea meets the moon blanched land. Listen, you hear the great roar of pebbles, which the waves draw back and fling. At their return, up the high strand, begin and cease, and then again begin, with tremulous cadence slow and brooding, the eternal note of sadness. Softly as long ago, heard on the Aegean, it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. We find also in the sound of thought, hearing it by this distant northern sea. The sea of faith was once, too, at the full and rounder shore, lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled. But now I only hear its melancholy, long, withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of the night wind, down the vast that is drear and naked shingles of the world. Ah, love, let's be true to one another. For the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, wherein their armies clash by night.